All right, guys, we uh, certainly haven't gone back and looked at the tape. You know, a lot of respect for Georgia's football team. Um, Kirby's obviously in year seven and done a great job there building depth on the team. They've got a lot of good players. And, um, you know, the summary of the game we did, we dug ourselves a little bit too big of a hole. And um, we got behind in the game. Certainly really proud uh, of the way our group responded at halftime. You know, I think that's one of the things I respect the most about this group is they really care. Uh, they want to do their job for each other and certainly have showed that uh, throughout the year. So um, not good enough. Same comment I said after the game, feel the same way. You know, there's lots of areas where we can do better uh, and we'll continue to learn and grow as a result of these experiences. I think that's important uh, that we remember these experiences and we make the most of each opportunity and certainly that's what we're going to do. So turning the page, um, you know, Jimbo's got a really good team at A&M, um, very talented group, um, you know, personnel, rosters deep, and uh, certainly height, length, verified speed, um, not many chinks in the armor when you just look at the matchup personnel-wise. And uh, I know it's been a little bit of a revolving door at quarterback, but he played really well. The rookie played well uh, this past week and certainly – you know, when you go play here at their place, there's a lot of challenges that go with that. So uh, we're going to need to be at our best, um, and we're going to need to have a really good week here. So what questions we got here? Right, we'll start with uh, Zach Alberti. Coach, obviously you've had a, a lot of history with coaches that you face this season. Jimbo's another one. Uh, can you just talk about your guys' past and, and interviewing with him at Florida State, just your time there? No, Jimbo um, – couldn't be more thankful for, you know, Jimbo gave me an opportunity. I was actually with him for probably five or six weeks there uh, before accepting a job at Alabama. But, you know, he had tremendous success at Florida State, won a national championship, evaluated, recruited well. You know, he had some fantastic coaches there and, and did something there that hadn't been done in a long time. So um, very thankful for that opportunity. And, you know, it's pretty well documented, you know, what Jimbo's been able to accomplish in his career. Comment on the situation with Brenton and his status? Yeah, no, um, I appreciate you asking that question. You know, Brenton, um, you know, we've kind of decided to uh, move on here. You know, I think, um, um, you know, I think that being a football player at the University of Florida is a, is a privilege, right? And there's certain expectations and standards that come with that. Um, Brenton's down, been here in his third year. Obviously, he's done a lot of good things um, for the University of Florida, and we wish him nothing but the best. But, you know, sometimes, you know, you have to make decisions in the best interest uh, of the team. And uh, certainly, Brenton, you know, we, we're going to do everything we can do to help him with his transition. Um, but as simple as that, you know, I think that, you know, we've we've decided to move on. Did he throw a punch at the end of that game against Georgia? Uh, you, Did Brenton throw a punch at the end of that game against Georgia? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, so what what is what is what was the issue here with him? I mean, you're talking about just moving on. Like, what did he do or didn't do that causes that prompted this decision? I don't know that we would get specific relative to the you know, to what caused the decision. You know, I think it's more of a cumulative effect here. We keep that in-house. Uh, Billy, so year one um, at Louisiana, obviously had ups and downs, like you're going through here at games. And do you see some similarities with what's going on and what do you hope to do this final month, you know, that maybe you did there to get that momentum kind of that you want? Yeah, no, I, I think um, there's a ton of similarities, you know, relative to the the things you learned, right? You know, I think the, the challenge that comes with, um, you know, starting over, you know, new group of people, staff, players, administration, community, um, 
you know, typically when you get, you get one of these jobs, you're there for a reason. You know, there's things that need to improve. Uh, and certainly it was that way at Louisiana. It's that way here. You know, I think that, um, but, you know, ultimately these are all great opportunities, right? I mean, I think uh, these are challenges that you embrace, that you take on, that you look forward to. Um, and there's no shortcuts. I mean, these are things that you got to go through and that you got to do, right? So, um, you know, we're very fortunate, um, you know, that we've got an incredible administration here, that we have an unbelievable experience to offer the student athlete here. I mean, this is one of the iconic places uh, in all of college football. We have an a top five university, we have history, we have tradition, we have a passionate fan base. Uh, this is a place you can do it, right? So um, I think this is all part of the, this is a page in the chapter in the book, right? So, um, you know, I think, and you guys will probably agree, um, you know, struggle's healthy, right? And I think majority of the growth in my life and probably in yours too if you thought about it comes from adversity comes from challenge right uh, and there's failure along the way right I think the key is that you capitalize off of those things you learn your lessons from those things you adjust you adapt you grow uh, and certainly that's what we're doing right I mean um, you know, you, you don't just flip a coin and get this thing going the right direction. It takes lots of people, uh, lots of hard days work, uh, lots of, you know, uh, tough decisions, and we're right in the middle of it. How important is this month for some for some players' futures, really, with the program, to put it bluntly? I mean, to show what they can do. Yeah. Uh, just to, you know, prove, prove that they should be here next year, you know, contributing. Well, I don't necessarily think about it that way. I mean, I, I'm, I think this is more about just this team um, still searching for their best, right? I mean, I still, I still think that we've got a lot of individual players that are growing, that are improving. Uh, we have certain position groups, units on our team. Um, I think it's more about, you know, finding a way to win a game one week at a time to create some momentum. Um, but... Um, you know, there's only one way to do that. You do that one day at a time. You do that one task at a time, right, with a, with a great focus. Um, you try to do your best for the people around you, you know, and I think that's what this group is going to do. How do you replace Brenton? Say that again. How do you replace Brenton moving forward? No, we've, we've been playing a, a handful of players in that position the entire year. You know, I think uh, – so AP and Lloyd and those guys will do a really good job. They've been playing in each and every game for the most part. I know Lloyd was out this past week, but um, we'll just continue in that direction. Just follow up on, on Edgar's question, Billy. Um, are, are there any, like, kind of milestones or markers along the way these last four games that can kind of tell you that you, you think the program as a whole is moving in the right direction? Well, I think, I think the resiliency that I see, you know, I mean, I think that I see the main thing that I would say that I respect is we got a lot of people that really care about doing their job for the people around them, right? So there's a certain loyalty required in this game, and I think that I see that from some of our players. I mean, we got a group that really cares, you know, and they've showed that throughout the year. Um, when backed in a corner, they've always – you know, kind of stood up and got up, off, got up off the ground and kept competing and playing with effort, trying to do their best for their teammates. I know this team's been pretty good protecting the quarterback all year, but, you know, three sacks, ten hurries in the game against Georgia. Were there yeah. issues in blitz pickup, or what, would, what were some of the problems there, you think? Yeah, no, I think a combination of things, but um, individual matchups, you know, that's a good group, you know, and I think they do a good job of creating one-on-ones, and certainly they got some good players, you know, so – uh, some, you know, not necessarily one thing. I think a combination of all those things. But, um, you know, some individual matchups, some communication, some technique. Um, I think they all contributed to those plays. But you're right. And, and partly um, a lot of down and distances where you're in that mode, right? You're in that drop back mode where you're standing in the pocket, right? So, 
I think the key there was to try to stay on schedule and avoid those situations. And certainly we weren't able to do that. And it's one of the reasons why we struggled in the game early. You had the problem again with the chunk plays, uh, the passes, eight, get thir 237 yards, yet Stetson's only 11 for 30 for 79 yards on mm -hmm. that play. Do you th is that a sign of progress that you have so many short plays and incompletions, even though you do give up the chunk plays? We did better. I thought we covered them better. Um, you know, I think that there were some fantastic plays too, right? I mean, I think there were some uh, – we're, we're close you know, on a lot of those that went the other way. But there's no doubt that in the back end we were cleaner. Uh, we still uh, can improve. Uh, but I, I do think that, um, you know, we did what was required to create some negative plays, to create some takeaways. Um, you know, and certainly at times defended them well. But um, the big plays, obviously, that you're talking about, those are the ones that hurt. Chase kicking the guy off the team is obviously a last resort um, when you're giving this guy. Is this a situation where it can maybe be a set the tone maybe for years here in terms of, you know, there is going to be a line in the sand that if you go too far, that's going to be it? I don't know. I want to get into all that. You know, I think these are, you know, I think, you know, these are, these are hard things, right? I mean, so I think we'll just keep all that in house, you know, and I think that, uh, you know, we want to do what we can do to help Brenton going forward. Um, but I think it was a healthy thing for our, our team, you know, and I think that the important thing to understand here is that we make every decision in the best interest of the team. Two more then real quick on that. I know you don't go for he'll stay in school and then would would you would he be welcome back for pro day assuming he's going to go go pro we'll cross that bridge when we get to it what are the challenges besides replacing his production on the field that you associate with removing somebody from the roster at this point in the season just in terms of because he's probably had you know there's friends in the locker room and just the dynamic that that can create what are the challenges that you would associate with that again we'll keep all that in-house how important is it for this program to get to a bowl game? Well, I think it's it's one of the benefits of going to a bowl game is that you get additional time with the players from a development standpoint. More meetings, more walkthroughs, more practice opportunity. There's no question this is a developmental game, and you do that in a practice setting. Um, it's certainly it's another opportunity for your team to compete and play, right? So more experience for players. Um, more, you know, opportunities for players to increase their value relative to their career, uh, and certainly an opportunity to celebrate some of the positive things that come from the year. Time for just a few more. Guys. How, how difficult has this SEC schedule been thus far? I mean, if you just look at it purely on paper, the next few games, the records aren't quite. I mean, you played some pretty some heavyweights so far. How, how <laughs> difficult is this, this stretch been? I mean, I, I think it's exactly what we signed up for. It's what we expected. You know, I think we've got a pulse of where we're at and what we need to do going forward, you know. But I think uh, we've also been in the game with all these teams as well, you know, late in the second half. So, I mean, it is what it is, you know. And I think that uh, gives us a good barometer of where we're at, what we need to do uh, to position the, ourselves in the future. You know, to have better success. You've also faced a lot of talented tight ends this season. How would you assess how the team has improved in covering that position in particular? Yeah, no, it's a great point. You know, I think the game's a matchup game. You know, I mean, I think each week they're a little bit different. You know, some weeks you play a team and the tight end is not necessarily a factor. But I do believe that um, tight ends can be very effective um, in particular, if there's other skilled players around them that are a problem, if that makes sense. You know, I think when you've got to pick your poison, you know, and I think that, uh, you know, you put a good run game, you put, you know, an elite player around or outside of those guys. I mean, you know, much like the National Football League, you're, each play you're kind of deciding where you're exposing yourself to some degree. So I think tight end uh, – when we have played them, uh, they can present a number of issues, especially if the other players around them are very capable. Billy, going back to OBCM, you were four and four 
uh, after playing Appalachian State, which was the top team in your league, and you just played Georgia, which is the number one team in the country. Are th what happened to turn the season around at Louisiana that may be helpful toward turning this one around too because you had such a strong finish there? Well, I think you, um, you know, you play, you're playing kind of like App State at that point. They were the team in the league, right? They had dominated that conference to some degree um, at that point. And then you go, we, we went in there and we were very competitive, you know. So I think that um, at that point, I think the players felt like, okay, hey, we can do this. You know, I think there was a, a moment in time there, even though you lost, you felt like, okay, you know, I think we know where we're at, what we need to do going forward. So, you know, I, I don't, I'm not big into comparisons. Obviously, you guys are comparing year one there to year one here. But uh, the one thing I do know is that those years are full of challenges and full of opportunities, right? And that's certainly the way I feel about this situation, just like we did there. That's drawing that assignment for you guys defensively is Amari Bernie Austin. Can you just talk about his development this year, uh, especially you know what he went through in the last game, getting a deflection and it not going mm -hmm. his way, and then the way he bounced back that third quarter? Yeah, no, Amari is uh, he's one of the best players that we have, you know, big picture wise relative to his attitude, um, his energy every day, the consistency in which he shows up and works. You know, he's playing injured to some degree, too. He's managing an injury. So he's a guy that has the respect of his peers. He's a smart player. He's a really good communicator. Uh, and he's really a versatile player. You know, he's, and he's been very productive for us. So um, nothing but respect for Amari and his overall approach. Thank you, Coach. All right, guys. Thank you all.